for tuning in. If you're here from Harbor Freight, welcome to Dance Garage. On this episode of Dance Garage, Dan will be unboxing, putting together, and testing these wheel dollies. And he'll also give a review at the end. So, let's jump right into that. Hey Dan, run that intro! Hey Gearheads, thanks for tuning in to a Dan's Garage NC review. I just bought these to move around the projects I just bought and I wanted to do kind of a open the box and assemble them and see how they are and uh, hopefully this will end up on Harbor Freight and if you're watching this from Harbor Freight, let's go ahead and get into unboxing. So this product is the Pittsburgh Automotive 1500 pound capacity vehicle dollies. It's the diamond plate ones, it's a two piece set in here and this is item 67338 and we're going to go ahead and open this up and see what they look like. So I did buy two boxes of these because I need four to move a car. Um, and I did already assemble the other two so I kind of know what I'm up against so I can let you know. As you can see there are four straps on the top out of, I think there was two more of these at the store. These boxes were in a little better shape than the other ones but the other ones weren't too bad either. That didn't work. So first you have your owner's manual and your safety instructions, we want to throw that out. Um, just kidding. And you want to save this, uh, reason is there's a place you can record the serial number here and you'll find that as we lift this first one up here, the serial number is right here on the bottom. So you want to write down that number, also uh, keep your receipt and write down when you bought it for the warranty. And it does have a diagram of how to put it together which is helpful. So we're going to take these out. As I said, they come in packs of two. You get some bubble wrap to keep your kids entertained while you're building this so they stay off your back. And then you get four packs of two wheels each. Obviously, eight wheels, two dollies. The thing is, each one of these packs, you'll notice there's one freewheeling wheel and there's one wheel with a brake. So we're going to get to that in a minute. But let's go ahead and take these out. As I said, these are pretty heavy duty pieces and it's nice to see that they have a really good double corrugated box. So this thing is actually pretty strong. They did put a, uh, an extra piece on the bottom, which is uh, somewhere like a Luan sheet. So that's pretty strong. So at least they did their due diligence in making sure that these were gonna arrive in one piece and uh, not damaged. Well, in many pieces. All right, so we're gonna open up all these wheels them aside. Okay, so we'll start with this one. You want to make a note of which side has the handle, and I'll tell you why in a minute. We're going to take the two freewheeling wheels and put them on the opposite side of where the handle is. All you really need for this is a 22 end box wrench and an 18 millimeter. I'm using a gear wrench, but you can use any kind of wrench. And then these come with, uh, this is the, the bearing. And then you have a flat washer, a lock washer, and then the top nut, which is an acorn nut. So that's nice. Once it's all together, it's kind of smooth, so uh, it won't catch on anything. So we're just going to go ahead and loosen up this nut and the washers and get it off. We're going to slide it up under there and put the flat washer on first, the lock washer, and then throw the acorn nut around and get that on. See, I'm a regular guy. I'm no professional. I drop stuff. So we got that one on. We're gonna do the same thing with this one. We'll just loosen this nut up, get the washers off, and then we'll go ahead and lift this corner up, get it in there, get the washers on, and the nut. Now that that's on, we can go ahead and just grab the top of the bearing nut there, and we'll grab this one with the gear wrench. And then once that lock washer hits, you're pretty much done. Just snug it up. This one as well. Uh, all right. So now that these two are done, we'll go ahead and spin it around. And remember I said you want to pay attention to where the handle is. And that's the side we're going to put these uh, locking washers on. Locking wheels. Did I say locking washers? I meant locking wheels. It's late. We'll take the last locking wheel. 
same thing over and over again. Now we'll tighten these two up. Okay, so you basically uh, obviously just do the same thing for the other one. Um, as far as sturdiness goes, like I said, this is a this is a piece of ancient diamond plate that's been preformed, so it should be, I mean, it's rated at 1,500 pounds, so um, we haven't tested it yet, but as far as construction, I mean, it's a little, a little wobbly, but, you know, it's from China, so what do you expect? It does have a nice handle. Um, let me show you something down by the car. So once you have all four assembled, you jack up your car, and you're going to go ahead and bring it over, forward a little bit, and then you slide it back under the tire. And then you'll be able to access the locks. That's why you want them on the outside with the handle. So if you're going to assemble these, watch this video first. Hopefully you are. And make sure the handle side is where you put the locks. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to assemble the last one. We'll go ahead and jack this up and put these on and see how it works. Now before you jack your vehicle up, if your drive wheels are on the ground, you should be okay. But if you're lifting up your drive wheels, you want to make sure the other wheels are chocked. So your vehicle is not going to roll while you're putting these under it. And then, of course, once you get them under there and you lower your vehicle down on all four, you want to make sure that the vehicle is secure and it's not going to roll away on you. You should have a flat surface in your shop. If you're doing this on an angled driveway or something, you better stop watching this now and figure something out. So now, once your vehicle is completely up on all four of these, Depending on which way the casters are facing, it may be a little bit of a push to get it moving, but once all the casters are facing the same way, it should move pretty easy. Let's give it a shot. I have something to push up against. Of course, this is a 4,000 pound car, so... <laughs> Wanting to move back. <laughs> so it does move, it's just hard to move a car this big and heavy by yourself. If you have a lighter car, you might be in better shape. If you have a heavier car but you have like you want to move it across the shop, once you get all the casters facing the right way, you may be able to move it. But mine's kind of sliding back towards the garage door, so I'm gonna cut this short. So let's see if it's going to move. Oh, that was nice. Look at that. I bought 15 cars like this Buick. I'm going to be selling them through my channel. So if you're interested in old cars, looking for a project car, I got a lot of Chevelles and El Camino. This Buick here is going to be going up for sale soon. They're all going to have titles. So check out my channel and thanks for watching. All in all, I'd say these are a good product. They're fairly inexpensive. I looked on Amazon, they were about the same price there that they are at Harbor Freight. So I'd recommend going to Harbor Freight. They got a great return policy. If you uh, keep the paperwork and uh, keep your serial number and everything, I don't think you'll have any problems with these. So I give them a thumbs up. Well, that's it for this episode. You can leave comments below, give this video a thumbs up, and make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, stay positive and keep on wrenching. Hey, your heads, thanks for tuning in. If you're here from Harbor Freight, what is this? 7338. I'll put the description. The, the, the. And we're going to put the two freewheeling. Can't really move it. It's so heavy.